welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be reading a creepypasta on My Little Pony. This was suggested by Mia Modesir. Thank you, Mia Modesir, for making the suggestion. I appreciate it greatly. And for anybody else who may have suggestions, let me know in the comments down below of creepypastas or SCPs you would like me to read. And I'll give you a shout out in the next video. So again, Mia Modesir, thank you very much for making the suggestion. And if I mispronounce your name, I apologize greatly. So without any further ado, let's get right into the video. Hello, I'm Steve Burns, a young man in his 20s currently living in the town of Seattle. It probably sounds silly, but I'm a huge fan of the show My Little Pony. Friendship is magic. No, I'm not a pedophile. And no, I'm not gay. I'm also not alone. These days, there are thousands of fans of the show outside its demographics, referred to as the brownies. The show is completely abolishing stereotypes of, of media geared towards girls. It shows it doesn't have to be a bunch of pink, sparkly nonsense about girls having tea parties, shopping, and worrying about boys and it can be appealing outside of its targeted demographics. Who says boys aren't allowed to watch girly shows? I mean, come on, that's just silly gender role crap. Best of all, the show made by Laura Faust. Yep, the same Laura Faust who brought us the Powerpuff Girls and foster home for imaginary friends. Therefore, it makes automatically sense. Of course, the show doesn't appeal to everyone, no show does. It's utterly impossible. So if you don't like it, that's fine. But don't go go saying, OMG, it's gay because it has unicorns. Okay, now that I got that out of the way, let's get down to business. So you see, I was up late surfing through clips of shows on YouTube. From, from Crip Spawn to Am I Pardon? Oh, I just love reading the comments of these videos. There's always an avalanche of sex jokes from the tiniest little things. You know, like jokes like, uh, that's what she said, and shit like that. And I always love laughing at how stupid it was having a comment page full of the same unoriginal jokes over and over again. If I remove every sex joke from these guys' comments, several of the pages will be completely empty. Anyhow, so I was watching one of the videos and I glanced in the related video section. There was a video titled My Little Pony Friends and Magic Lost Episode Season 1. I clicked the link but instead of taking me to the video it prompted me to download a, a file titled My Little Pony Friends and Magic EP Episode 0 AVI. This was very strange. YouTube video links never do that. I also found it odd that the episode number was zero. But curiosity got the best of me, and I let the file download, despite how weird it was a video link would do that. It downloaded into Firefox download folder, like any other file would, and opened the downloads window, and of course, at the top was the AVI I just downloaded. I double clicked it to open it and like any other AVI, Windows Media Player launched and began to play the video. It was your generic 1080p AVI encoded of My Little Pony episode. The first thing I found unusual about the episode was that instead of it playing a short scene at the beginning going into the intro, it just skipped straight to the intro. I found it slightly odd but I disregarded it and kept watching. The intro played as always, and I decided to hum along with it until it ended. After fading out from the, the title uh, developed from, for television by Laura Foss screen, the episode started. It seemed just like an ordinary episode. According to the beginning credits, the episode was written by Megan McCarthy. Cool, I thought. That's the same writer as Party of One and Lesson Zero. Maybe I'll get to see some ponies 
go insane like in those episodes. The name of the episode was Friendship is Dead. It sounded rather morbid and dark, and I got a bad feeling about it. But anyways, it began with Twilight Sparkle trotting down the street, humming the My Little Pony theme song as she went along. Fairly normal so far. She stopped it when she came to Applejack's apple stand, where she was giving a bushel to Lyra. Lyra gave a few bites to Applejack, then turned and then left. Applejack then turned to Twilight. Howdy, partner, said Twilight. How, what can I do for you? Oh, hi, Applejack, replied Twilight. I was wondering if you've seen Pinkie Pie anywhere. Usually I see her at least once a day, even if she's just hopping down the street and I happen to walk by and see her. But these past couple of days, I haven't seen her at all. Come to think of it, I haven't seen her either, Applejack admitted. Why don't you check down Sugar Cube Corner? Okie dokie, said Twilight, as she trotted off. So far, it was pretty normal, right? The scene cut to Twilight Sparkle entering Sugar Cube Corner. But something was different in the scene. The animation seemed more realistic, more three-dimensional. Something wasn't right. Something was different, and this bothered me. But I kept watching anyways. Mr. and Mrs. Cake did not seem to be around. Twilight trotted up the stairs to Pinky's apartment and knocked on the door. No answer. After a few moments, she knocked again. Still, no answer. This kept up until Twilight broke down the door with her magic out of frustration. In the middle of the floor sat Pinkie Pie, with her back facing away from the screen. But her hair was deflated, and her color tone was more dull and like, more much light in Party of One. Um, Pinkie? asked Twilight. Then Pinky's head did something that should not have been possible. It turned around a full 180 degrees to face Twilight. But hey, it's a cartoon, and Pinky's a fourth wall breaker, so I didn't really care that much. That is, until I saw her face. When I saw her face, I knew something was horribly wrong. First of all, her eyeballs were gone. I mean completely gone. Leaving nothing but hollow sockets where they should have been. Twilight acted that this was completely normal. Hi, Twilight, Pinky said in a disturbing voice, a lot like Twilight when she said hi, girl, to the cute Mark Crusaders in Lesson Zero. Um, hi, replied Twilight. Is there a point to parties? asked Pinky. Is there a point to joy or penis? Because it never, never last. Pinky, what's gotten into you? Twilight said frantically. Hmm. I just wanted to tell you how happy I am. You could make it to Grump Grump Gummy's party, exclaimed Pinky out of nowhere, as if they were still at the party she threw in Party of One. Um, Pinky, we're not at Gummy's party. That was a while back responded a confused Twilight. Ah, uh, just a fucking boring old apple, said Pinky. I can't tell you, I can't tell you that, silly. Then it wouldn't be a surprise. Oh, wait, I was thinking back to the, to the, to the happy times. Pinky then turned her head back the right way and burst into tears. I'm not sure how that was possible, considering she had no eyes, but apparently it was. She held her head to her hooves and sobbed, a very real, human-sounding sob. It was heartbreaking. Twilight tried to comfort her, asking what was wrong, but Pinky would not answer. Then Pinky reached for a handgun. She held it to her head, and before Twilight could stop her, she shot splattering very realistic blood and brain matter everywhere. Twilight gazed upon the scene in horror, 
The scene abruptly cut to Twilight standing in the street of Ponyville with every citizen lying dead around her. She held a handgun to her mouth. What's the point? She asked herself. It's all gone. My friends, my mentor, what's the point? With that, Twilight pulled the trigger. <laughs> Lasting blood and brains everywhere. After this, the credits rolled as usual. That hadn't, hap that hadn't even been uh, close to 20 minutes like a regular episode, and the rest of the AVI was just black screen. I was horrified. This wasn't the friends and magic I knew and loved. This was something horrible, morbid, and sick. My mind raced with questions. How did this get on YouTube? Why did I download an AVI instead of going to the video page? How was this leaked? Why would Morg Megan McCarthy write such a morbid episode? And furthermore, why did the animators actually agree to animate it? How is Megan not, not fired for this? So many questions, but no answers. I knew it wasn't just some sick, man-made video. Everything seemed much too... Much, much like the actual creation of a My Little Pony team for it to be fan-made. The voices weren't off in the slightest. It just... All, all of it was just too real to be fake. If that makes sense. I had to figure it out. I closed the media player and sent the AVI file to Laura Faust. She denied that such an episode was ever produced. Furthermore, when I clicked the video link that downloaded the episode onto my computer, I was directed, directed to a video of a running horse. This was all so strange, and I was so tired. I just deleted the AVI, shut off my computer, and went to sleep. <laughs>